In this video, we're going to go ahead and go over creating a back backup plan within a Kronos Backup 12.5. So as you can see here, we're in our management console. We're going to go ahead and navigate over to Plans, Backup. And from this screen on the right-hand side, you'll have a number of options. Um, primary one that you're most likely going to be using is the actual Create Plan. This is going to effectively create a plan. Uh, from scratch with the settings on configuration that you designate. The other option, import, would be actually involved, involving importing a, a, a plan. So let's go ahead and select create plan. First thing that we're going to do is we need to name our plan. Now this is strictly going to be for the purposes of the management console. This isn't going to actually affect the name of the backup itself the backup file um, as it exists wherever you end up storing it. Um, but this will uh, allow you to customize the name for the purposes of managing it within the uh, AMS. So let's just go ahead and call this backup test. Now the next couple of options that you have here uh, is obviously what you want to back up first of all. Now, there's a couple of different options that you can uh, select here, the most obvious of which is the entire machine, and this is actually the default that's selected when creating a new backup plan. Um, this is going to obviously back up the entire machine. You also have the options to back up specific disks or volumes, files or folders, Microsoft SQL data, Exchange databases, Exchange mailboxes, and ESXi configurations. So to make this uh, rather quick, we're gonna go ahead and select disks and volumes. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you need to select the actual device that you wanna back up. Now, this is going to, first of all, require that you have multiple machines available to back up. Otherwise, the only one you're going to see on this list is going to be your primary machine that you're currently operating on with the AMS, in this case, our desktop right here. As you can see, I've got several other machines, but these are currently offline, so we're not going to select these. So we're gonna go ahead and select our desktop, select add, hit done. You'll see now it's changed to that machine. And now we need to select what items we're actually going to back up. So what this is gonna do is it's going to scan the machine and give you an idea of exactly what disks and or volumes uh, exist on this machine um, that you can select for backup. Now you could of course select all of these if you wanted to, um, or you can select a specific one. So in this case, we're just gonna do the EFI system partition since it's the smallest. Next, you're gonna need to select where to backup. Now, by default, there's not gonna be any set locations. Uh, as you can see here, I've already got a few locations set up, but if you did wanna add another location, you'd have multiple different options. Um, by default, it's going to select a local, a local folder. Um, this unfortunately isn't very useful because uh, generally speaking, assuming that you're uh, backing up the, you know, your AMS machine doesn't really do much good if you back it up onto the machine itself you'd want to uh, select another location. Um, but there's also cloud storage, uh, which will require you to actually sign in with your Kronos account. You have a network folder that you can select uh, basically anywhere on you have a, a shared network uh, store. A storage node, assuming that you have one set up. This is our Acronis Cyber Infrastructure, an SFTP location, uh, or a tape device. Um, now you could also uh, select it based on a, a script. Um, that's a little more complicated, so we're not gonna really touch base too, too far on that, but just know that that is one of the options. Um, so for our intents and purposes, just to make this easy, we're not going to uh, actually add another location. I'm just going to select one of the ones that we already have. So I'm gonna select our uh, 
local location again. I said earlier that it's not typically recommended, but for the purposes of showing off just how to set up a plan, it's not too important because we're not actually backing, we're not actually worrying about, you know, consistency and making sure that everything is backed up because we don't have, this is a test machine, we don't have to worry about any of that. Next up is going to be our schedule. Now you can basically set this to on or off. Um, if you set it to on, the schedule is going to operate as it's scheduled. Um, in other words, you are going to set up a time uh, when it's going to run a specific event. In other words, by default, it'll be set up by time. Um, you can set up different options such as uh, an X number of days or hours since the last backup, uh, when a user logs in, when a user logs off, when the system starts, when it shuts down, or on a specific Windows event. The easiest is typically time. Uh, and then generally you can select either a monthly, weekly, daily, or hourly uh, time increment. Depending on what you select, weekly will be the will typically be the most common. Um, and this will give you multiple different options as far as uh, what days you want to select for the weekly view. For the monthly, you're going to have a little bit more uh, granular options as far as you specific days, all days, maybe only certain days of the week, so last Friday, et cetera. By daily, you would uh, specify um, what days you could run it. Well, you know, every day, obviously, run Monday to Friday only, um, start at a specific time, and then various other options, such as different start conditions that you'll have here. And then hourly is going to be very similar um, with the options uh, as far as when you can set these up. So let's just go ahead and select weekly for this purpose. Um, we can go ahead and select the options that we want here. For instance, let's just say, let's make sure that uh, start conditions, the user has to be logged off. It's not gonna back up if the, if the user is, is actively logged in and using the machine. Next, we need to specify how long you want to actually keep the backups. Now, this is effectively important because obviously the more often you back up, uh, as well as any sort of restrictions that you might have for your organization may have a specific time that it's required to keep its backup files. So this would allow you to more automate that process where it will keep uh, the backups that it creates for a specific uh, period of time that you can designate. Um, now you can adjust this however you need to. You know, let's just say we need to keep a backup for 24 months. Um, you can also set, select a, a single rule uh, rather than uh, uh, the more uh, individual rules. Um, and then of course you can also specify rather than age, maybe you only wanna keep a certain number of backups. So you wanna keep the backups indefinitely until they reach you know, X number of backups that you've created. Uh, and then of course there's the keeps backups indefinitely option. So we'll just leave it at, at the, at the um, defaults for right now. The other thing to note is when it actually starts the cleanup. Um, the default is gonna be after backup and this is typically what you want because you don't wanna start a cleanup before the backup because you know in the event that something goes wrong, you don't want to uh, have that cleanup, you know, wipe out a backup that you may need. So by default, it's gonna be set to after. And then there's a couple of other options here. Encryption. This is going to be useful if you need to um, password protect, uh, make sure that only certain individuals are going to have access to that backup. Um, so you can include the password here as well as the encryption algorithm that you want to use. Um, and then you can also convert this to a VM if you so choose. Um, finally, we have the option to specify multiple locations if you want to save uh, the backup to multiple locations. Um, and then there are several optional settings that you can include in here, such as, for instance, 
if there's if there hasn't been a successful backup for a specified number of consecutive days, you can set that here. These are these are not anything that's going to affect the backup directly, at least the alerts goes, um, but it's more for uh, how the plan will operate. So in here, you've got your uh, backup file name. And this is what I was talking about earlier where the name of the plan that you specify <laughs> is strictly for within the management console. Now, if you wanted to specify a more um, unique name for the file itself, you can do so here. The default basically uses the machine name, the plan ID, and the unique ID plus A. Um, as an example down here, you'll see this is an example of what the actual backup file will look like in a Windows format. The backup format here by default is an automatic selection. The main difference between these two is version 12 is going to use a single backup file that gets created for the backup. Version 11 is going to uh, break that up into multiple file, uh, multiple file formats. Um, so instead of having a single backup file, you're gonna have effectively a, a, a collection of files that are gonna make up that backup instead. Um, the automatic selection is by default. Um, and depending on how uh, various backup options that you set, it will choose best practice based on whether it's 12 or 11. You've got your backup validation here. Uh, and this is effectively going to validate the backup once it's finished to make sure that there's no issues with the file itself. Um, keep, mi keep in mind that this is, as it states, it's a time consuming process, so by default it is not selected. Um, but if this is something that you wanna do, it is an option. You can change your block tracking, set your compression level. Um, obviously the, the, the higher compressed that you set this to, uh, the longer the process is gonna take. You've got your email notifications that you can set up assuming that you have your email server set up. Uh, error handling, this is effectively going to uh, affect how the system processes any errors that it runs across during the backup process, um, such as how many times you want it to reattempt, the interval between attempts, et cetera. This is going to uh, basically give you the option to use uh, fast incremental or differential backups, um, which is uh, effectively, it's going to allow the software to determine whether a file has been changed um, by the file size and, and timestamp. You've got your file filters here. Um, this will allow you to specify specific files that you wanna back up. Um, so for instance, say you had returned backups uh, uh, emails specifically um, and you didn't want to pull any you know, Word documents or things along those lines, you could specify a specific file type um, to only look for those email files um, as opposed to anything else. Or for instance, you could exclude you know, certain names, uh, uh, hidden files, things like things along those lines. As LVM uh, snapshotting gives you an option to uh, select how that is handled. Get your multi volume snapshot, your performance and backup windows settings. Your uh, pre post commands. This is effectively going to give you. Uh, certain the ability to execute certain commands before or after the backup is completed. Again, um, specifically for this is going to be similar to the pre post commands, but this is specific to the capture commands uh, instead. Got your SAN hardware snapshots, your scheduling. Um, now, this is going to be more related to, um, for instance, if you have uh, multiple backups running at the same time, you could uh, set this to 
um, either start them all exactly as scheduled or you could distribute the backup start times. So for instance, if you wanna stagger the backup times, one backup starts at eight o'clock, the next starts at nine, et cetera, et cetera, you could do so. Um, a sector by sector backup, you've got your tape management, task failure handling, basically how it's going to handle uh, failed tasks. Uh, your start conditions for those tasks your volume shadow copy service. This is going to be the uh, volume shadow copy service for virtual machines. Um, this is going to be an option on effectively how the, the system considers uh, a weekly backup. In other words, when do you want the week to actually start? By default, it's set to Monday but you could, for instance, set it to Wednesday if you wanted to, or Sunday. And then finally, uh, your Windows event logs. This is effectively going to give you the option to log the events in the application event log of Windows. Go ahead and select done with that. Now we don't actually want to add another location, so we're just going to go ahead and create. Now, as you can see, we have our new backup plan set. It's gonna give you all the information of the settings that we included. You can even edit it from right here. Um, now, again, it is scheduled, but uh, if we want to, we can go ahead and select run right now. It'll run the backup uh, as it's processed um, and go ahead and uh, back up those files that you specified. Uh, and that will conclude how to actually create a backup plan. Hope you found this video informative and please look forward to more in the future.